Hi, everybody. Welcome to daytime. Happy Friday to you. And hopefully your drive to work or wherever you're going today was a smooth one as we see really the first snow around the region today. And it's just in time because Santa Claus is coming to town this weekend. He's going to be here for the KW Parade, Cambridge Parade coming up tomorrow night and so much more. So relax, take it easy and enjoy the show with us today. And today is a very special day. It happens to be World Diabetes Day. So we're going to talk about diabetes, find out more about it with a couple of people who know very well what diabetes is all about because they are living with it. Erica Klutstra is a blogger with Base Drafts Thoughts, and she's brought with her her daughter Maggie. And Maggie, you're five, right? You're five years old, and she is living with type 1 diabetes. Yes. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, this has been quite a journey for your family since Maggie was diagnosed with diabetes almost two years now. Yeah, it's almost been two years. Wow. At three years of age, what was it? How did you know that something wasn't quite right? Well, it started out, we thought she had the flu. She was not hungry, she was thirsty, she was sleeping a lot, and that went on from week after week, and about a month and a half later, we're like, okay, this is not the flu. And the symptoms were like, she was peeing a lot more, drinking a lot more, wasn't hungry, losing weight, extremely tired. And those sound like the flu, but it was like there's something wrong. So we called her doctor and immediately she was rushed to the hospital and diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Well, and that's got to be one of those diagnoses that kind of, you know, hits you in the stomach as soon as you find out. Did you know much about diabetes prior to I this? had no clue. There's no family history, so we had no clue about it. And seriously, when the doctor said she has type 1 diabetes, my head just shut down, and I'm like, is my child going to be okay? I didn't hear anything else he said to me at that moment because it was like, I have no clue what this is. Is she going to die from it? So. so you had to do a lot of learning as a family all of a sudden to find out, you know, what it was, what you needed to do, how you needed to help Maggie feel better. Right, yeah. There's a lot of care in taking care of a child with type 1 diabetes. We have to check her blood sugars 10 times a day, wow. which means 10 pokes on a finger and then we have to count out all the carbohydrates in our food and we had to learn foods that had carbohydrates including things like milk like we didn't know milk was a carbohydrate and then we have to give her insulin every time she eats and and trying to figure that out i know i have a friend who's a type 1 diabetic and and you know early on trying to figure out all of those counts and what it means and how to regulate it and to keep your your blood sugars all stabilized it takes a long time to figure that all out it does and it's with a child, especially, like, which right now she's going through a growth spurt, so now her blood sugars are extremely high, and it's just something we have to try to figure out a balance again. It's just when you think you have things settled, it's not settled. As I mentioned before, this is World Diabetes Day. It's celebrated around the globe on November 14th because this happens to be the birth date of insulin founder Frederick Banting. Yes. So around the globe, everybody's celebrating. And the theme for this year is you don't know the half of it. And I think that's applicable to most of us when it comes to diabetes. We don't know the half of it. And there's a lot of myths, I guess, surrounding diabetes. Yeah. Things we've often heard that, you know, aren't there so. Yeah, I get the question a lot of, oh, it must be so sad that she can't eat birthday cake on her birthday. A type 1 diabetic can eat absolutely anything they want. They just have to count the carbs and give insulin for it. Like, I mean, we as a family live a healthier lifestyle, so we choose not to eat as many cupcakes and candies, but a type 1 diabetic can eat anything they want. They just have to know the carbs and give insulin for it. Uh, and when you're talking about eating, you know, one of the myths is you can kind of manage things by diet. With type 1 diabetes, that's not the case. Type 2 diabetes, you can sort of manage things with diet, but in, in Maggie's case, that's not, no, not the case at all. No, she will always have type 1 diabetes until there's a cure. Her pancreas has stopped working. There is no insulin producing from her pancreas, and there is no lifestyle that she can live that she can be off of insulin. She, has, she is dependent on the insulin injections into her body. Now that being said, I know that we've come a long way in our, our understandings of diabetes and ways to treat it. I know that Maggie's got a little friend along there that's mm. lying on your lap. This is actually her diabetes doll. Yeah, she's got an a insulin pump just like Maggie has an insulin pump. And the insulin pump that Maggie has, maybe just I'm talk sure. a little bit about that, Erica, and right how it tummy. works. So um, it's on her tummy, and it's, sorry, it's constantly giving her insulin, but we also input carbohydrates in it, and it gives her extra insulin when she has the foods that she eats. 
And the, that's one of the, the changes that's happened just over the last few years. Are more of the insulin pumps are available. It's my understanding that helps to keep her insulin levels more constant, yes. more regulated. Yes, because she was on a pen. She would get poked four times a day with a needle. And uh, the pen was helping, but her blood sugars would spike or go really low all the time. And ever since she's been on the pump, she's been pretty even, but we still have the ups and downs every day. So how has this changed things for you as a family? I know besides Maggie, she's got an older sister, she's got a baby brother, uh, you know, you and your husband. How, how has this changed things for you? When we, it, it's, it's, everything's different. Like we, my husband and I don't sleep because we have to check her a couple times during the night for fear of having a low blood sugar because if she has low blood sugar, she can go into a coma or possibly die. Uh, when we go out to eat, we try to find restaurants that provide the carbohydrates on their menu or have a, some kind of nutrition thing because it's harder for us to figure out and estimate. And I've heard that it gets better once you've had it longer and can figure it out yourself. But there's a lot of, like, we don't go and enjoy going out as much eating and stuff. Well, this is World Diabetes Day, and there is a reason that both you and Maggie are sporting the color blue. This is the color of the day. Yeah, it's diabetes, the diabetes color. And instead of a ribbon, we have a circle. So, like, we have hope written on our hand with a circle. So it's... Very nice. Did you help do that, Maggie? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> And shy. I know that there's going to be a big event happening in Waterloo at Waterloo Public Square later on today. Yes. They're joining a human circle in support of Diet World Diabetes Day. They're encouraging everybody to come down to wear their blue, to be part of this. And along with everything that's happening here in the region, there'll be millions of people worldwide who'll be doing the same thing, families that are touched by diabetes, um, joining hands and hearts to help raise awareness for the disease. Yes, and it's at 4 o'clock at the... Uptown Waterloo area. So you can go blue and come to Waterloo Public Square and join the, join the Circle for Diabetes Awareness. Thank you for sharing your story you. today Thank and for you. coming on and helping to, to create awareness for us. And have we come up with a name for the baby yet, Maggie? She said after the show today, she's going to name that baby. Mm -hmm. She's going to have a name. So you'll let us know what the name is, okay? You let us know? <laughs> All right, thanks for joining Thank us. You. All right, when we come back, we're talking about writers on music. It's a great show that's coming up with, and it's a conjunction of the KW Symphony and Wordsworth Books. We're going to tell you more when we come back, so stay with us.